Exciting and new. Uh, I don't know if love is exciting and all the time, right? We're expecting you. Love can be all different kinds of things. And for the next two hours, we're Life's going to discuss love. Hi, everyone. I'm Corey Johnson. And today we're discussing love. Give us a call. Rouse's Markets phone line 76. Thank you, Drew Brees, for bailing us out of that thunderstorm. Boys, speaking of thunder showers, band after band after band of rain just rolling in, each one dumping several inches of rain. Some areas six to eight inches maybe today. I think San Diego gets 10 to 12 a year. We got six to eight. Basically late morning, early afternoon in New Orleans. It looks like most of it is gone. It looks like most of it is out of the way. Gasson Korb, an executive director, New Orleans Sewage and Water Board, is going to join us in about 10 minutes to discuss on this wide open Wednesday edition of the program. Very rainy Wednesday. Like I said, it it would be torrential rain for 30, 45 minutes, an hour straight, where an inch or two or more are coming down. And then there might be a lull for a second for 25, 30 minutes. And then... All of a sudden, another round comes rolling in, a slight lull, another round comes rolling in. That last batch was about two hours straight and and pretty consistent rain for two hours straight. I mean, it's it's so arbitrary to discuss, but um, when it's raining, when it's coming down pretty good, where you'd say it's, you know, it's pouring, you know, it's pouring. A pretty steady rainfall where it's pouring. It's not just drizzling. It's not raining. It's pouring. I mean, I know this, this sounds so silly. That That's like an inch an hour. So if you have an hour of that steady downpour, that's about an inch of rain. Now, that intensity level, I mean, what am I saying? You can be look, reading it in so many different ways, but there's a drizzle. There's, hey, it's raining outside, and you can dash from the house to the car and not get soaked. But then there's where it's steady downpour, and you're like staying in the car, waiting for it to slack up a little bit before you run out to the house or the building if you don't have an umbrella or raincoat or whatever. So when it's really coming down, when it's torrential, when it's coming down sideways, when it's just pouring, it's, if that goes for an hour straight, that's a few inches in an hour. I mean, again, two, three, four inches, just depending on how much is coming down, but six to eight inches of rain in a very short time period. It should just be like basic New Orleans kind of required learning like we know George Washington's the first president the sewage and water board when things are working well the pumps are designed to pump one inch of rain the first hour and a half inch of rain every hour after that So if three inches of rain come down in one hour, three inches of rain, they can do an inch in the first hour. Then they're doing a half inch every hour after that. So it's going to take, what, two and a half hours to drain three inches of rain? Is that right? Two and a half? No, no, three and a half. An inch the first hour, and then a half inch every hour after that. One, two, three hours. An inch the first hour, second hour, third hour, fourth, five. Holy smokes, five hours. Five hours for three inches. It would take, they would do an inch in the first hour. Then the next inch would take two hours. And then the following inch after that would take another two hours. 
So that's five hours for three inches that fell in one hour. And today we had three inches falling in one hour in certain parts of Metro New Orleans and New Orleans proper. So that's five hours of pumping. Anyway, very rainy Wednesday afternoon, street flooding all over Metro New Orleans, not just Orleans Parish, Jefferson Parish. This this is what blows me away, especially in Orleans Parish. We focus so much on the sewage and water board. And it is broken. There's no doubt about it. But when you have a rain event like today and Jefferson Parish, the West Bank, St. Bernard Parish, uh, uh, surrounding areas, the North Shore, they're flooding. They're having street flooding and the like. There's only so much that you can do. So even a hyper-efficient sewage and water board, you still need retention ponds. How we have not been digging retention ponds. If you've ever been over by Pontchartrain Park neighborhood, the Joe Bartholomew golf course, right in between the golf course and the neighborhood, the main drag right through there, not press drive, but the, the street through the neighborhood. There's a long retention pond, a linear retention pond, might be about 20 yards wide, but it goes for a few hundred yards and it is beautiful. It's beautiful when it's just a normal dry day. It's got water features. It's linear. It zigzags around. It looks good. It's got natural plants and wildlife and the like around it. And then when it rains, it fills up with water. And ideally, you can control them. Like, for instance... Bayou St. John, we should have lowered the water table in Bayou St. John, like knowing this thing was coming. So Bayou St. John is more accepting of taking in water. Now, if you have retention ponds all over the city, when a rain event like Wednesday is known, like we've been knowing it for a few days now, you lower the water table in those retention ponds. And then they start filling with water and sewage and water board pumps are pumping to, it's a new system. So it's new pumps, new pipes, everything pumping those retention ponds down. And then the other pumps are having no problem with the inch an hour, half an inch every hour after that. Cause that is it. Even if that rain is coming down, it's not flowing into the drains in the streets. It's flowing into the retention ponds and the drains in the streets. You have a dual system working, but you're pumping down retention ponds instead of pumping down streets and flooded neighborhoods. So how we have not implemented the Netherlands plan, they have like playgrounds and town squares, public spaces, parks, that are designed to fill with water when they have a rain event like today. Designed to fill with water. I'm talking urban areas like a, it looks like a mostly concrete, it's porous, concrete park with benches surrounded by, you know, high rise buildings and apartments and the like. And then when there's a big rain event, that, that, that area just fills with water. The basketball court, the tennis court, all that just fills with water. It's like Pontiff Playground, but instead of pumping it in and having a levee system around it, hold it in, it's a lower area. Gravity naturally fills it. Folks are like, what's digging a hole? Someone on Twitter is like, what's digging a hole going to do? I showed him a photo of the underpass at Canal Boulevard or the underpass at Carrollton Avenue or the underpass at Gentilly by I-610. They're all underwater. You want to know why? Because they turned into retention ponds. They're the low-lying area, gravity. The, they, the water naturally flowed there, and they filled up with water. And the road on either side, 
high and dry, high and dry. So that's how retention ponds would work. Just like that. Just like that. Corey Johnson with you on a wide open Wednesday edition. Thanks so much for joining us. A very rainy Wednesday. When we return, Gossen Corbin, Executive Director, New Orleans Sewage and Water Board, joins us next. The Port of New Orleans is the gateway to global commerce, the economic engine that moves Louisiana and our country forward. For more than 125 years, Port Nola has continued to deliver the goods we use each and every day by river, rail, and by road. No matter what, it all happens right here, delivering Louisiana's future at the Port of New Orleans, your working river. Learn more about your Port of New Orleans. Visit portnola.com. Did you know Rouse's sells only Angus beef? Angus beef's natural marbling means more succulence and flavor. Whether you choose Rouse's USDA Prime, Choice, or Select, it'll be only Angus beef when you get it at Rouse's. Tastes like home. River City's Total Maintenance Keeps You Cool, New Orleans. NoahAC.com is your cool spot. Young's Dry Cleaning has free pickup and delivery. That's right. Young's Dry Cleaning has absolutely free pickup and delivery. Home or office, East Bank or West Bank. Call Young's at 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. Here at the NOLA Coalition, we love our kids and we love our city. The people of New Orleans are standing together for a better future. By harnessing our collective resources, the NOLA Coalition will create a safer, more prosperous city for all residents. Your support is needed to help reduce violence, invest in our children, and drive generational change. Join now at nolacoalition.info. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine, as unique as you. Trey Yen in Mandeville, a New Orleans tradition for over 40 years, serving the finest Louisiana-inspired Chinese cuisine. Open Tuesday through Sunday. Trey Yen. The Woodhouse Day Spa, with five area locations, New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and now Mandeville. A day of relaxation is just moments away at the Woodhouse Day Spa. WoodhouseSpas.com. That's what I said. That's French for bread. Leidenheimer. The French bread of the city of New Orleans. Good to the last crumb. Leidenheimer French bread. Custom window treatments can enhance the look and value of your home. At Helm Paint and Decorating, we're proud to offer custom plantation-style window shutters by Scandia. Perfect for any window, including large frames, French doors, sliding doors, and arches. American-made SL300 shutters are available in many colors to match your personal decor. We'll come out to measure, and you'll receive fast delivery. Plus, they're virtually maintenance-free. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore, let us steer you in the right direction. Helm Paint and Supply. For over 20 years, serving healthy, fresh, authentic Middle Eastern cuisine, Lebanon's Cafe. In the Carrollton section of Uptown on the streetcar line, Wednesday through Monday, 11 a.m. to 9.30, Lebanon's Cafe. Dave Miet Insurance Agency, Auto Home Flood Business, 504-556-0809, Dave Miet, insagency.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency, Auto Home Flood Business, 504-556-0809, Dave Miet, insagency.com. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria has over 15 specialty sandwiches, a big 10-ounce burger, and some of the best pizza in New Orleans. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria, on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview, between Canal Boulevard and West End. Thank you. 
Hey, every day this program on radio, television. We're on YouTube, The Neutral Ground with Corey Johnson on YouTube. Click to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's all brought to you by the Lamarck Automotive Complex in Kenner. On the car, a car corner, Williams Boulevard at I-10. In Kenner, brat, right on the corner, right on the price. Home of the big store, Lamarck Ford, for over 45 years. Number one Ford dealership in the region. Lamarck Lincoln, number one Lincoln dealership in the state. The legendary Ford truck dealership on Jefferson Highway, Crescent City Ford, for over 80 years. Now under the Lamarck umbrella servicing, maintaining any Ford or Lincoln vehicle. Both dealerships bridging the gap. The Lamarck Automotive Complex out by the lake and now Lamarck Crescent City Ford by the river. Corey Johnson with you. Wide open Wednesday. It is where New Orleans talks. Very rainy Wednesday. Band after band after band of rain rolling in several hours, several inches, six to eight in some areas of the metro, including New Orleans proper. We were expecting Gossan Korb, an executive director of the New Orleans Sewage and Water Board. He apparently got called into a legislative meeting. Steve Nelson, general superintendent, Sewage and Water Board, joins us in his spot. How you doing, Steve? Steve, you there? Uh-oh. Did we lose you, Steve? Uh, it seems like we lost the connection. I'm getting him back on right now. All right. We'll get Steve Nelson on in a second. No, that was a bummer. Look, I just line up the guests. When I get a call that I'm getting the backup guy, I'm not, like, happy about it, but I'm still glad to get a representative from the Sewage and Water Board. But we, you know, we take what we get on this wide open Wednesday. Steve Nelson, gender, General Superintendent, Sewage and Water Board, joins us live on the program. How you doing, Steve? Hey, uh, drying out. Doing doing better now. Thank you, Corey. Yep. How many inches over at the Sewage and Water Board plan on Claiborne this afternoon and this morning? Yeah, so, so we have a drainage pump station six, which is kind of the high rainfall. It's right at seven inches. We saw a max out in New Orleans east of just about seven and a half and right around six and a third to six and a half inches across just about every part of the city. How did the system overall work out? Uh, overall, generally pretty well. We did have, um, as, as I think Grace has reported with our media outlet, a couple of minor power issues that affected primarily drainage pump station one, six, and three. Um, but our main issue, our, our our issues out in Lakeview generally did not appear. Drainage pump station 7 and 12 in Lakeview worked very, very well. Drainage uh, pump station 4 in Gentilly worked really well. New Orleans East fared fared very well, as did uh, the West Bank. What, what areas did not fare well? Uh, so primarily around drainage pump stations 1 and 6. Those areas are Broadmoor, the older part of the city, and, and parts of Uptown, and then kind of that Carrollton area over towards the Parish Line with the primary issues. Uh, we had some problems with our EMDs today that prevented about two to three pumps from kicking on during some of that rain this afternoon. Now, the EMDs are what, these like lo diesel locomotive engines? Yes, those are the, the older electromotive diesels. They're converted converted locomotive engines. Why, why do these things keep having problems? I mean, how old are these things? Uh, they were purchased used back, I believe, in 2017. So they're, they're fairly old, and it's a fairly complicated system. There's five of them. They're kind of daisy-chained together. So uh, we have had issues with them in the past. And one of the challenges we had today is they, they tripped a breaker. And so when that happens, you have to do what we call resetting the bus. So that means you've got to take pumps offline and then try and bring, bring them back on, which would, in this case, have made a bad situation worse. No, I get it. But I mean, like a diesel locomotive engine is like as efficient as it gets. 
Yeah, uh, generally locomotive engines do run well, and, and the engines themselves can run well. But when you, you tack on that conversion to 25 hertz power and then trying to get five of them to work together, uh, it is a, it's been a challenge for us. Yep, no doubt. Um, what, what, what did uh, you said one, six, and three? What did three affect today? Uh, DPS three is kind of over towards the Gentilly area, kind of south uh, towards the river of City Park. We had a couple of area, a couple of issues over there uh, earlier in the day, but those those pumps picked up for the rain in the afternoon. Uh, and looking at our pump stations now, we should all be uh, below street level uh, across the city at this point. Is this just too much rain for this system to handle? Well, the rule that we have had at the Sewage and Water Board for the better part of a century has been an inch in the first hour and a half inch every hour thereafter. And that first hour, we got over two and a well, got about two and a half inches uh, in one hour, and that's going to put you in a pretty precarious spot. And then this afternoon's rains, we got some what we call training. So that rain just kind of rolled over us for a couple of hours solid at well over uh, an inch to an inch and a half an hour. And that's just far more than the system can handle, unfortunately. And when that happens, you have what areas, uh, just the, the obvious areas, the lowest lying areas are impacted first. Yeah. Anything, anything that's low, low lying. Uh, we do have some situations. I've been on the phone with DPW three or four times today, as well as, uh, no sep talking through those locations where um, it might be a surface drainage issue versus a canal. Uh, so yeah, it's going to generally start with those areas that are lowest. Hey, now you need what? 44 megawatts of 25 Hertz power to have the system really working at peak efficiency, 44 megawatts. Is that right? Yeah, so 44 megawatts will run all of our 25 hertz assets in the old part of the city. That's correct. And what, this turbine 4 from 1915 being down uh, takes you off of hitting the 44 megawatt goal, and you guys were at a little less than that, right? Yeah, going into it, we're at about 40 and a half megawatts, which you don't usually have to run every pump that you have in the entire system because it doesn't typically rain hard across the whole city. Uh, today, we did have a lot of rain uh, across the entire the entire metro region. Uh, in Turbine 4, we're looking forward to getting that back, the plan, and it looks like schedule. We will have that back uh, in time for hurricane season, and that's going to put us in a place to have, between that and the frequency changes, that'll be back about 70 megawatts. So really looking forward to having that back in place. Turbine 5 from 1958 operating fine today? That, yes. Turbine 5 was our workhorse today. Yep. All right. Now, so I'm assuming you needed all 40 and a half megawatts of 25 hertz power today, right? Uh, we did. And as I mentioned with the EMDs and the issues there, that put us even even a little bit short of, of that 40 and a half. So there were about two or three pumps I, I w could have used off of those EMDs uh, as well. How many EMDs were out of the five? So uh, there were th all three of those. The the breaker that we had uh, related to those three was out today. So that's that. That's kind of that, that's seven and a half. Is that right? That would be seven and a half megawatts. Yep. So that put you down to thirty four. Yep. Thirty three. Thirty three. Thirty three. Yep. Thirty three megs. When you needed to be at forty four. So for the twenty five hertz pumps. Safe to say the sewage and water board today was at 75% power. Um, it, it's a little better than that. I, drainage pump station six, there were two pumps at DPS six uh, that we weren't, when we were talking about rationing power, the primary effect was at DPS one, three, and six. Everywhere, everywhere else had enough power. Um, and DPS three, where we were able to bring on some additional pumps before that rain got to us in the afternoon. So DPS six and one were the primary uh, locations where he had issues. Hey, uh, one, six, three, Broadmoor, Uptown, Carrollton, Gentilly, City Park, all 25 hertz, right? Correct. Yep. You got to go out to the east or the west bank 
primarily to get to the 60 hertz stuff, right? Yes, we do have some 60 hertz pumps at DPS 6, 1, and, and 3, but uh, the bulk of that pumping capacity is 25 hertz, yeah. Now, I, I thought there were five EM, AMDs, the locomotives, five, not three. There are five. We had two of them down going into the end of the storm. One, we're replacing uh, a radiator on it, and then the second one, we have some voltage regulating equipment that should be in here in the next couple of weeks, and we the plan right now is to have all five of those available for hurricane season. But so the three that were ready to go this morning, all three crapped out. Yeah, we had a breaker trip that prevented us from, again, we we might have been able to restart those, but in order to do that, you have to be able to take other pumps offline and then uh, and then put those back in. And uh, with the rain we were having today, steady and hard like that, we didn't want to take anything offline that was already there. Now, Steve, y- you guys have had turbine five go down before, N- not to, you know, be cynical or jaded, but if that would have gone down today, uh, what would you guys have done? What would be the plan? That would be a major challenge for us. Um, I mean, this really highlights the need for that power complex project. Even even with turbines four and five, um, I think the issues, you know, as illustrated with the EMDs, are, are well known. When you're dealing with com- with complicated, very old equipment, uh, it's very fragile. So that having that power complex project, uh, the work that the city council has recently authorized, we're really, really grateful for that. That's going to be a huge help for us. That gets online uh, summer, June 2025. We are really, really looking forward to that. So just so I have the numbers right, you want to be at 44 megawatts for the 25 for game changing innovation oh, wait, look oh, to the latro uh, family of companies i apologize steve i'm sorry about that i'm uh i'm rolling right into the break let me take a quick break we'll come right back and get on the uh on on, on top of that if you can hang around steve nelson's with us general superintendent sewage and water board Corey johnson with you wide open wednesday don't move successful team visit latrum.com that's l-a-i-t-r-a-m.com here at the nola coalition we love our kids and we love our city the people of new orleans are standing together for a better future by harnessing our collective resources the nola coalition will create a safer or prosperous city for all residents your support is needed to help reduce violence invest in our children and drive generational change join now at nolacoalition.info 1970 was an exciting time in new orleans the first jazz fest was held the city hosted its first super bowl and the first town paint location opened on Earhart boulevard while the floppy disks mood rings and pet rocks may have come and gone since the 70s helm paint has grown to become your premier source for quality benjamin Moore products competitive pricing and personal service please visit one of our locations today and we'll meet our competitors prices on any identical product helm paint and benjamin Moore, let us steer you in the right direction helm paint. When USA Today ranked the 10 best must-visit New Orleans restaurants for travelers, Mid-City's own Katie's made the list. USA Today says Scott Craig is chef-owner at Katie's, a much-loved Creole Italian eatery that draws armies of regulars for lunch, brunch, and dinner. A neighborhood spot where locals congregate and New Orleans-style hospitality rules. Indeed it does. Katie's in Mid-City. Ladies and gentlemen, in this Lamarck Automotive Complex is something called quick lane. Tires, wheel alignments, you know, struts, servicing your transmission. We do an all makes and models. It doesn't have to have been purchased from us. It's for you. It handles your lifestyle with your budget in mind. And we want to get you in and out as quick as possible. Quick lane, you got to come see it. You're going to love the experience right there at Williams Boulevard in Kenner. Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504 556 0809. Dave Miet. Agency.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504 556 0809. Dave Miet. Agency.com. The Woodhouse Day Spa, with five airy locations New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and now Mandeville. A day of relaxation is just moments away at the Woodhouse Day Spa. Woodhouse Spas.com. 
Outdoor dining, Middle Eastern cuisine, under the oak trees, Lebanon's cafe, some of the city's finest lamb chops and shish kebab, Carrollton at Jeanette by the streetcar barn, Lebanon's cafe. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine, as unique as you. For Leidenheimer Baking Company, producing the perfect French bread is more than a vocation. It's a sacred mission. And for five generations, they've used the same time-honored process, baking their signature loaf with its crisp crust and delicate center, unique and still good to the last crumb. From the finest French Quarter restaurants to your local po'boy shop, for over 125 years, New Orleans' own Leidenheimer. Check out the Pels, three games to go. Then it's playoff time. The Pels sitting alone in the sixth seed. Check out the Pels on the flat screens at Katie's in Mid City. And unlike a sports bar, I mentioned it's Katie's in Mid City, the quintessential New Orleans neighborhood restaurant. A taste in New Orleans, big portions, great for sharing. Food you actually want to eat. Unlike at the sports bar, you're like trying to find something that's edible. It's Katie's where you want to go to eat, plus the flat screen TVs to check out the Pels as they head into the playoffs. Katie's in Mid City. Steve Nelson is with us, general superintendent with the sewage and water board. Steve, just so I get the numbers right, when you're running these 25 hertz pumps, you need four, ideally, peak efficiency, run them all, 44 megawatts of power. Uh, you had 40.5 on hand because turbine four from 1915 is out. Uh, these EMDs, these basically di diesel locomotive engines they put out two and a half uh uh megawatts of power each um turbine four and five put out like 22 megawatts each so correct me if i'm all wrong on any of this 44 is what you need you're at 40 and a half the three diesel locomotives went out. That's seven and a half. That puts you down to 33. If turbine five would have gone out, you, you would have been down to 11 megawatts of power when you need 44. Am I right on all of that? That's uh, in general terms. Yeah, four uh, turbines four and five are, are a couple megawatts less than than that. But but the general the general situation is yes. When you don't have that redundancy, uh, we if you lose turbine five, it becomes a very very serious issue. Which again, we're really for that power complex project project is critical. We want to get away from having to rely on these turbines that are 50 to 120 years old. We want to get away from using uh, the EMD system, which is is not very reliable. Uh, and we want to get to a place where uh, we have dedicated feeds from Entergy. And it'll also, that project will also replace those turbines with, uh, with a brand new jet engine turbine so that we're not relying on 100 plus year old equipment. Two, two, ideally, right? You already have one turbine yeah. six, turbine six, and then turbine seven, which you own in storage, but just isn't built out, right? You got it. That's right. And turbine four will be totally decommissioned, and five will be decommissioned or not. Uh, turbine four and the EMDs will both be uh, decommissioned. Turbine five will remain as a backup to a backup. So turbines six and seven will generate enough power. If if we didn't have energy power for some really really strange reason with this power complex, we would be able to use turbines six and seven, and then turbine five 
uh, could serve as a backup to a backup. So it would be double redundancy. And, and, and all of this, what we're talking about, the more modern turbines and all of that, that isn't the primary system like it is today. It, it would be the backup system to the new power complex with the converters, correct? That is correct. We'll have a dedicated feed. Actually, the substation is already installed and the utility rack uh, to take the power from that substation over to our control facility is uh, is essentially a data place to be finished right now. Uh, we just had the major contract to put the rest of the equipment that you alluded to being uh, completed and in storage, installing that. And that is going to get us out of the out of the situation we are, where we are making our own power most of the time, or almost all of the time. That's going to be energy power on a dedicated feed. When do you throw the switch, cut the ribbon? About fifteen months. Uh, yeah, June of twenty twenty five is when we're going to be uh, right, starting so to utilize 14, that power. Fourteen months, something like that. Um, yeah. And and ideally, what's the goal for? Um, this upcoming hurricane season and Super Bowl coming next February to have turbine four running, turbine five running, five EMDs running. Yes, correct. And using turbines four and five as that primary uh, source of power for us. Turbine four, we have we have been able to isolate the issue. We were getting some some water in our oil. We figured out where that was coming from. That's going to be completed probably first first week of May, maybe into the second week of May. But that'll be done in time for hurricane season, and then we'll be able to use turbines four and five through hurricane season and the Super Bowl, and then have the EMDs as a backup to that. Turbine six again is an on-site post Katrina. Uh, jet engine that the Army Corps of Engineers built out. Turbine 7, very similar. You guys own the turbine. It's not built out. That's a multi-million dollar build out. When's that going down? Yeah, so that's all part of a contract, that contract numbered 1420. And that's our internal numbering for that. That was uh, The bid was just opened on that, and that will be installed here over the course of the next year. So that when you cut the ribbon for the new power complex, you'll have both those. You'll have six, obviously, going, but you'll have seven as well. That's right. Correct. Okay. All right. Steve Nelson's with us, General Superintendent, Sewage and Water Board. Hey, Steve, just to recap, uh, today, dur the, during this morning and the early afternoon rain event, uh, pumping stations one, six, which handle Broadmoor, Uptown, and Carrollton, and Pumping Station 3, which handles Gentilly and some of the city park area, those went down? Um, there were parts, there were a couple of pumps that went out. So the stations didn't go down. We just had between two and three pumps spread across those three stations that went down. Any, like, percentage of what? the efficiency drop to at one, six, and three? Uh, I don't, I don't have a percentage off the top of my head. I mean, DP, what the primary effect was at DPS six later in the afternoon, we had 10 pumps running, uh, and then two that we were not able to bring online. So we would have run 12 if we had a full complement of power, but we were, we were only able to run 10. So uh, I don't have a full percentage, but, um, the bulk of our power did come from turbine five, as well as some of our frequency changers. So minor effects, but had an effect nonetheless. Hey, Steve, uh, Gosson was expecting to join us. I wanted to ask him, I don't know, as general, I mean, as the uh, general superintendent, you have a uh, voice on this or know what he's thinking, or you have discussed this with him. But last week he called the proposed, uh, recovery district for two years he said it was terribly distracting destructive i'm all for help from all levels of government where we ask for it and can use it but that concept seems very destructive is was that taken out of context in the times picayune was that accurate what what would he have even been more emphatic if 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 he could have been what 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 is he, is he, is those comments, I guess, clarification is what I'm looking for. 
Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for Gasson, of course, but I think his comments were pretty clear uh, and and reasoned and well thought out. And I think what we're seeing uh, in the legislature today are are some bills that are are going to help move move some key issues forward. Things like consolidation of drainage and uh, and the issue with with billing. Yeah, that's the 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 key I wanted to talk about the the billing thing. I, I like the solutions. Two years, same billing, whatever. You guys are going to have the smart meters in a few years. That's going to solve that problem. Uh, the the other thing you mentioned, though, that that's that's a little different. How how quickly? I mean, I, I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, how quickly will you take over catch basins and some pipes of different diameters that the New Orleans Department of Public Works apparently? is responsible for right now what when when will that go down uh that would have to be determined by the legislation i believe that it would take effect in january uh but that's uh, something they're going to have to write into the bill of course we're we're uh looking forward to seeing how that turns out of course it's got to have adequate funding with it uh, if we just get the responsibility without uh, the financial support, it's going to be pretty tough to, to make that work. Of but course. We are all for bringing it under one house. That makes life uh, much simpler for everybody. And I think that really benefits our customers. Has well, anyone audited or broken down the New Orleans Department of Public Works and their guesstimation or what a realistic dollar amount would be to clean the catch basins and handle those pipes of certain diameter that they apparently were supposed to handle? Uh, yeah, I know that that system split out in 1991 after uh, millage failed in 1990. And I do know that they have, they are, they are working on cleaning catch basins. They just awarded a contract in the range of $10 million and that'll handle about cleaning about 10% of, uh, of the system. Uh, so we know that that's kind of a, uh, a general, a good general ballpark uh, to have a contractor clean ten percent of the system, which generally speaking, you want to have about ten to twenty percent cleaned in a given year, so you can get to every single pipe and catch basin on a on a five year rotating basis. You already have the employees equipment in place to do it, or it would be more hires, more equipment needed. No, we would need to we would need to stand up uh, stand up a full. We need to stand up a full complement of uh, of folks and equipment to be able to to handle that small diameter drainage. We handle the stuff that's over that's three feet in diameter and larger, yep. and then of course our, our drainage pump stations. Let's shoot for July one, not J- January one. How's that sound, <laughs> Steve? Always a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Corey. That's Steve Nelson, General Superintendent. New Orleans Sewage and Water Board. Corey Johnson with you on a rainy Wednesday. The Lamarck Automotive Collision Center. It's open now. We fix cars and trucks. We do all makes and models. And it doesn't have to be a Ford or a Lincoln. It could be whatever you're driving. 32,000 square feet under roof. Now open at 3101 Williams Boulevard. It's all about you, the customer, getting the most for your dollar. I would say the most perfect collision center anywhere. The Lamarck Mark Automotive Collision Center, 3101 Williams Boulevard. Go check it out. Dave Miet Insurance Agency, Auto Home Flood Business, 504 556 0809. Dave Miet, INS Dave Miet Insurance Agency, Auto Home Flood Business, 504 556 0809. Dave Miet, INS from the owners of Katie's in Mid-City and Bienvenue in Harahan, an old-school deli with over a dozen specialty sandwiches. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview between Canal Boulevard and West End. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria. Here at the NOLA Coalition, we love our kids and we love our city. The people of New Orleans are standing together for a better future. By harnessing our collective resources, the NOLA Coalition will create a safer, more prosperous city for all residents. Your support is needed to help reduce violence, invest in our children, and drive generational change. Join now at nolacoalition.info. That's what I said. That's French for bread. Leidenheimer. For over 120 years, New Orleans' very own Leidenheimer French bread. 
It's time to relax. The Woodhouse Day Spa, Metro New Orleans premier day spa experience, now with five area locations. For a day of relaxation or maybe just a quick one-hour getaway, the Metro area's premier day spa experience is at the Woodhouse Day Spa. And now five area locations, New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and our newest location in Mandeville, the Woodhouse Day Spa, woodhousespas.com. Rouse's Market is hiring. With 65 stores, fuller part-time employment, and flexible scheduling, Rouse's has a job for you, or maybe even a career. Apply at any Rouse's store or online at rouse's.com. What actually lasts a lifetime? Not much, but at Helm Paint, we have something guaranteed to last a lifetime. Benjamin Moore's Regal Select. This paint and primer in one offers cutting-edge waterborne technology, smooth application, and long durability. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore, your New Orleans paint store. Young's Dry Cleaning, with two walk-up locations with personal service. Young's on Claiborne and Young's on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview. Young's Dry Cleaning. Call 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine as unique as you. For over 20 years, serving healthy, fresh, authentic Middle Eastern cuisine, Lebanon's Cafe. In the Carrollton section of Uptown on the streetcar line, Wednesday through Monday, 11 a.m. to 9.30, Lebanon's Cafe. The Port of New Orleans is the gateway to global commerce, the economic engine that moves Louisiana and our country forward. For more than 125 years, Port Nola has continued to deliver the goods we use each and every day by river, rail, and by road. No matter what, it all happens right here. Delivering Louisiana's future at the Port of New Orleans, your working river. Learn more about your Port of New Orleans. Visit portnola.com. At you right wide open Wednesday edition of the program. Corey Johnson with you. You know, if I got to sit here and discuss the sewage and water board, I need to be at least fairly knowledgeable about the sewage and water board. You know, I, 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 I make fun of how New Orleans is like a talk radio desert. You have like former FM disc jockeys that are like, yeah, I'll try talk. And when they're like the turbines not pumping water, I'm like, yeah, it's a turbine. It's generating power. It's not a pump. You know, when, when things like that are said, and you're like the host of the show, it's not good. So I try to be factually correct, say the right things when I'm talking about the, the right stuff. And it, 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 the sewage and water board, what they really need to do, I swear, they need like a schoolhouse rock. They need like a three-minute ca- cartoon, a cartoon that it, it's about three minutes long and it just breaks down the entire sewage and water board system. How many pumping stations? How many pumps at each station? Are they running on the 60 hertz like today's power or are they running on the old power, the 25 hertz? You know, why the difference? Why the, the sewage water generates their own power? Why energy can't supply it? What these converters do? What an EMD is? What a turbine is? And a pump, 25 hertz, 60 hertz, all of that. It, it's, it's a lot of crap, but it's once you learn it and know it, it's pretty easy. And it's pretty simple. No, like the, the 44 megawatts of power that's for the 25 hertz they need if you're powering every pump that runs on 25 hertz and that would be like the inner city new orleans pumps broadmoor uptown Carrollton, gentilly city park mid city all that not new orleans east those run on new power 60 hertz not the west bank they run on new power 60 hertz but the old pumping stations like on Broad and others, they, they run on the 25 hertz power. So the 
sewage and water board has to generate their own power to run these old pumps. And why? Like, why aren't they doing this in other cities? Other cities don't have drainage pumps. Other cities don't have drainage pumps. Gravity drains water in every other city in America. I don't think there's a single city in America that has drainage pumps to drain their, the, the city. So New Orleans is a bowl. We fill up with water. You have to pump the water out, out back outside the levee system. Now, slowly but surely, these 25 hertz pumps break. And when they break down enough, they're replaced by a 60 hertz pump. Goss and Corbin said it'll be about 10, 20 years before every pump is replaced and there are no more 25 hertz pumps and there will be no need for 25 hertz power. Like 20 years. In the meantime, the, a construction or an on-site substation that will convert power to 25 hertz on site and generate more than the 44 maximum needed. I think it's like 60 something megawatts of power, more than enough. And I mean, literally you have this turbine four from 1915. It generates like 22 megawatts of 25 hertz power. Then there's turbine five from like 1958. It generates around 25, 22 megawatts of power. Those two working perfectly get you pretty close to the 44 megawatts of power needed to run all those 25 hertz pumps. They, they have five diesel locomotive engines, literally diesel locomotive engines. Each one generates about two and a half megawatts, about 10% of what the big turbine produces, these diesel locomotives. They got five of them. They have a jet engine now that the Army Corps of Engineers built post Katrina around 2008. It is literally a general electric jet engine mounted in a building. And that's a turbine. And with converters that can produce 25 Hertz power. And they have another one turbine seven. That's just sitting in a box in a building. And it's going to cost tens of millions to construct a building and mount that thing and get that thing operating. The good news is when the substation opens, all those turbines will be backup power. The turbine four from 2015 will be museum piece, offline forever. Turbine five from 1958 will be a backup to the backup. The jet engine that's in operation, the next jet engine that'll be in operation within a year, those two, those are backups to the new substation if for some reason the substation power were to go out. So they're upgrading turbines to modern turbines and the modern turbines won't even be the primary power source any longer. The substation will be. So that's a big upgrade from old turbines as the primary power source to a new substation as the primary power source and new turbines as a backup, a redundancy. So that's a fairly good plan. Well, it should have been done. Sadly, sadly, they, they looked into it. I believe it was like Oh seven Oh eight. The city had Siemens, a German company. Uh, they were going to supply a 25 Hertz turbine. Brand new. And the city decided against buying that and invested double, triple or more into fixing the circa 1915 turbine four and circa 1958 turbine five. Mind blowing. Mind blowing, Blue Boy. You as a Basset Hound would have made the decision and got the Siemens 25 Hertz modern turbine back in 06, 07, 08, and solved the whole problem back then and saved the city a lot of money. And you're a Basset. Good job, Blue Boy. Five o'clock, Pawa Awa next.
You're on the neutral ground with Corey Johnson on TV on Cox Channel 4 and Spectrum Channel 333. Also on YouTube, on radio at NOLA Talk, 93.9 FM, WSLA New Orleans. It's 5 p.m. For game-changing innovation, look to the Latrum family of companies located in Harahan. Intralox, a Latrum company, changed the game when they invented modular plastic conveyor belts over 40 years ago. These belts and innovative Intralox technology are transforming movement in manufacturing facilities around the world. Intralox is a dynamic global company now hiring in production, warehousing, shipping, and more. If you want to be part of our successful team, visit Latrum.com. That's L-A-I-T-R-A-M.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504 556 0809. Dave Miet. INS Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504 556 0809. Dave Miet. INS Agency.com. Young's Dry Cleaning has free pickup and delivery. That's right. Young's Dry Cleaning has absolutely free pickup and delivery. Home or office, East Bank or West Bank. Call Young's at 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. Hi, this is Joey Helm. My dad, Bunky Helm, had a vision. A vision of a locally family-owned store serving the residential and commercial paint needs of New Orleans. I think dad would be proud of today's Helm Paint and Decorating. And here's why. We have the best technical staff in the business, providing the best color matching service in Southeast Louisiana. Perfect matching for any color and any brand. And we'll save your color so you don't have to save those old cans. Helm Paint offers free two-hour delivery. Our in-store decorators will assist you on deciding what color and type of paint to best showcase your home. But most importantly, as your local independent Benjamin Moore dealer, our products provide the greatest value in the paint industry, superior coverage, and Benjamin Moore paint simply covers better and lasts longer. New Orleans is a city of vibrant color, and no one else provides the paints of New Orleans like Helm Paint Decorating. Visit any of our six locations or online at helmpaint.com. Helm Paint, Helm Paint, let us do you right. Helm Paint, and supply. Rouse's, New Orleans Grocery Store. Rouse's has the only full-service grocery stores both in the French Quarter on Royal Street and in the CBD on Barone in the old Sewell Cadillac building. The Rouse's on the River, Chapatulas at Napoleon, is in a century-old warehouse. And uptown on Ferret at the corner of Valence is Rouse's all-new boutique store. With seven locations in Orleans Parish, Rouse's is New Orleans Grocery Store. Rouse's Markets. Taste like home. Ford F-150, number one seller in America. What about in the USA? Uh, let's see, what about in the world? Who sells more trucks than Ford? Nobody. It's because the Lamar team is the real team. All that makes it happen is one goal. Everybody having a great experience at Lamar Ford. We became number one for a reason, because we're good. And we need to prove it every day, every deal, all the time. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine, as unique as you. That's what I said. That's French for bread. Leidenheimer. Five generations. Family owned and operated. Leidenheimer French bread. 
It's time to relax. The Woodhouse Day Spa, Metro New Orleans' premier day spa experience, now with five area locations. For a day of relaxation or maybe just a quick one-hour getaway, the Metro area's premier day spa experience is at the Woodhouse Day Spa. And now five area locations. New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and our newest location in Mandeville. The Woodhouse Day Spa. WoodhouseSpas.com. Here at the NOLA Coalition, we love our kids and we love our city. The people of New Orleans are standing together for a better future. By harnessing our collective resources, the NOLA Coalition will create a safer, more prosperous city for all residents. Your support is needed to help reduce violence, invest in our children, and drive generational change. Join now at nolacoalition.info. Next on Jake and the Fat Man. This is not a good case for him to get his feet wet with. When Derek's first case... I love this show, Jake and the Fat Man. It's up to Jake. Listen to William Conrad. I just want to know William Conrad sitting like in his Malibu house. His agent knocks on the door. Hey, Bill, check out this script. There's a TV series you could be in. All right, let me look at this. Jake and the Fat Man. What did his agent say? You ain't Jake? William Conrad is a rather large man. I, I guess the script writers were like, look, man, we want William Conrad. The show is called Jake and the Fat Man. If this guy who is just fat and obese is offended by the show title or, or that we're, you know, saying he's fat, then shame on him. So William Conrad at that age was like, ah, paycheck's a paycheck. Call me the ugly bastard. I don't care. So he was like, Jake and the fat man, I'll be the fat man. I am the fat man. When do we start? Anyway, was William Conrad's agent a little weary knocking on the door, handing him that script? Hey, I take offense to that fat man. <laughs> okay, we could change it to Jake and the obese man. Corey Johnson with you. Wide open Wednesday. Yeah, you right. You 45 and under crowd. Jake and the fat man was a television program. When the TV had a back to it, it was a square, essentially. It went as far back as it was wide or tall. 27 inches was the largest television screen available. It was back in the olden days of TV. Right now, you know that 1080 stuff you're looking at, that HD, the 4K, even going deeper than that. We were running on about 240 lines of resolution. A much crappier picture, like 20% of the quality. The Jake and the Fat Man days, a television program. Eh, I, I guess a black and white TV was still available for purchase back then. Although I would say 99% of people did not have one. When I was a child, when I was a child, we had black and white TVs in some rooms in the house. Kind of the, you know, crappy room, the last room, the whatever, the worst room that had a TV had the old black and white. Anyway, Corey Johnson with you on a Wednesday. No Jake and the Fat Man coming your way. And I think no more rain. I'm not a meteorologist by golly, but I think this morning and what we had uh, this afternoon, it, we're pretty much done for a while till like maybe a week or so. And the temperatures, I don't know if, if you felt it. It was a little cooler this afternoon after the rain came in, like 2.30, 3, 3.30 this afternoon. Definitely cooler than this morning. It's about 69 degrees right now. But tomorrow when we wake up, day one of French Quarter Festival 2024, by the way, no rain, a little cloud cover, breezy, windy tomorrow. 
61 when we wake up. The high temperature tomorrow at French Quarter Fest and all over New Orleans and the Gulf Coast, 74. That's some yeah, you right weather tomorrow. Overcast, breezy, 61 to 74. Friday, a little cooler when we wake up, 58 degrees, sunny, bright, sunny day, maybe a cloudless sky, zero chance of rain Friday, 58 degrees, a high temperature Friday, 75. Yeah, you right. Saturday, 58 degrees when we wake up, like Friday, cloudless, sunny sky, 78 degrees the high. Sunday, 62 degrees when we wake up, 79 the high, sunny. Great French Quarter weekend. Tomorrow, a little cloudy, but breezy. I guarantee you some sun will be popping out tomorrow. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sunny, sunny, sunny. Minimal clouds, zero rain, temperatures in the 60s going into the 70s. Almost perfect weather. I mean, you want me to be picky? Saturday and Sunday, we get to like 78, 79. whoop de doo Can't even be picky. Might even have that cool breeze coming off the Mississippi River, that like air conditioning feel. We get that for about 10 days to two weeks a year in New Orleans. The cold snow and ice and water coming into all those rivers and tributaries up north flowing into the Mississippi. When the Mississippi River is flowing by the city of New Orleans, it is not warmed up yet. It's a little cooler than normal. And we are warming up. The breeze coming off the river is a cool breeze. Different from a breeze in other parts of the city. It is literally like an air conditioning breeze. It happens just about every year in New Orleans. And it is about a one to two week time period. And that's it. And it's done. It's quick. It's a pretty neat New Orleans phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomenon that some of you may not even know about. You've had to have gone down on the riverfront or lived in the quarter or the Marigny or the Bywater and have experienced it. And then in the next year and the year after, like, damn, I'm remembering this this time of the year. Corey Johnson with you. Wide open Wednesday edition of the program. A very wet Wednesday. Band after band after band of rain. Several hours, several inches of rain. Six to eight inches of rain. The Sewage and Water Board, Steve Nelson, General Superintendent, joined us last hour. Their gauge hit seven inches of rain on Claibans over there. Leonidas, Leonidas, Claibans, Monticello, River Road. Seven inches. In that Riverbend, Carrollton, Holly Grove neighborhood. Carrollton neighborhood, seven inches. Pump stations, one, six, that handle Broadmoor, Uptown, Carrollton. Pump station three, Gentilly, areas around City Park. Both had pump failures. Some pumps going down at those facilities, contributing to less than ideal, you know, pumping situation, getting water out the streets and neighborhoods. All 25 hertz pumps were needed today. That would have required 44 megawatts of power. They were down to 33, about 75% of power needed to power all the pumps. So 75% of all pumps were working. Then you talk about some pumps going out at pump stations one, six, and three. You got to lower that. Maybe two-thirds, guesstimation. Two-thirds of all pumps operating today. A rough guesstimate on my part. Last hour, if you missed it, four o'clock hour, Steve Nelson, Sewage and Water Board General Superintendent, joined us on the program to discuss that and a lot more. Hey, the five o'clock power hour on this wet and rainy wide open Wednesday. The rain's behind us now. Five o'clock power hour this afternoon brought to you by Leidenheimer Baking Company. Leidenheimer French bread, so good. 
part of New Orleans, part of the fabric of this city. I mean, if you're like, what is New Orleans? Name me something that is, you know, part of us, part of the DNA of the city of New Orleans. Leinheimer French bread is as good of an example as anything out there. They've been baking that French bread you love, the po' boy French bread, fine dining restaurant experience French bread. They've been baking it in the Crescent City for over 125 years, since the late 1800s. It's mind-blowing. And they're still baking that French bread you love right here in the Crescent City since the late 1800s. Wow. Three centuries into their third century. It is the official French bread in New Orleans. The official po' boy bread of New Orleans. Leidenheimer French bread. Good to the last crumb. Such a true line. Leidenheimer Baking Company. Five o'clock powwow of this afternoon. Brought to you by the wonderful Leidenheimer Baking Company. Boy, that stuff is good. You know how well Leidenheimer freezes? You can just throw it in the freezer. And then when you want it, you just pull it out right out of the freezer, stick it in the oven at like 350 for about six to eight minutes tops. And it is piping hot, like fresh from the Leinheimer bakery tasting fresh. I'm not kidding you. Leinheimer French bread freezes fantastically. And then you get it out the oven and that it's like hot on your fingertips and the outside's crispy. The Port of New Orleans is I'm a French bread. Louisiana and our country forward for more than 125 years. Port Nola has continued to deliver the goods we use each and every day by river, rail, and by road. No matter what, it all happens right here. Delivering Louisiana's future at the Port of New Orleans, your working river. Learn more about your Port of New Orleans. Visit portnola.com. Young's Dry Cleaning, with two walk-up locations with personal service. Young's on Claiborne and Young's on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview. Young's Dry Cleaning. Call 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. Rouse's Market is hiring. With 65 stores, fuller part-time employment, and flexible scheduling, Rouse's has a job for you. Or maybe even a career. Apply at any Rouse's store or online at rouse's.com. That's what I said. That's French for bread. Leidenheimer. Served in New Orleans' finest restaurants. Leidenheimer French bread. The Lamarck Automotive Collision Center. It's open now. We fix cars and trucks. We do all makes and models. And it doesn't have to be a Ford or a Lincoln. It could be whatever you're driving. 32,000 square feet under roof. Now open at 3101 Williams Boulevard. It's all about you, the customer, getting the most for your dollar. I would say the most perfect collision center anywhere. The Lamarck Automotive Collision Center. 3101 Williams Boulevard. Go check it out. Here at the NOLA Coalition, we love our kids and we love our city. The people of New Orleans are standing together for a better future. By harnessing our collective resources, the NOLA Coalition will create a safer, more prosperous city for all residents. Your support is needed to help reduce violence, invest in our children, and drive generational change. Join now at nolacoalition.info. <laughs> Custom window treatments can enhance the look and value of your home. At Helm Paint and Decorating, we're proud to offer custom plantation-style window shutters by Scandia. Perfect for any window, including large frames, French doors, sliding doors, and arches. American-made SL300 shutters are available in many colors to match your personal decor. We'll come out to measure, and you'll receive fast delivery. Plus, they're virtually maintenance-free. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore, let us steer you in the right direction. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore. 
The Woodhouse Day Spa, with five airy locations, New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and now Mandeville. A day of relaxation is just moments away at the Woodhouse Day Spa, woodhousespas.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency, auto, home, flood, business, 504-556-0809, Dave Miet, insagency.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency, auto, home, flood, business, 504-556-0809, Dave Miet, insagency.com. In New Orleans, we don't eat to live. We live to eat. More is better. Scott Craig of Katie's. That is our slogan. More is better at Katie's. It means more of everything. Not just more food, more smiles, more friendship, more love, more, more, more. When you do something, you have to do it right. It's all about more, and it's all more of the good things. Get more at Katie's Restaurant in Mid-City. Hey, Latrum, the global manufacturing giant, is hiring. If you live on the East Bank or West Bank, their Elmwood facilities got you covered. If you live on the North Shore, Latrum has an I-12 facility. And if you go to their website, Latrum.com, it has a full listing of positions available. And that's not like two or three job openings. It's dozens and dozens and dozens of job openings at Latrum.com. Latrum spelled L-A-I-T-R-A-M, Latrum.com. Corey Johnson with you on a wide open Wednesday edition of the program. Next month, next month, Mother's Day, I got a $50 Woodhouse Day Spa gift certificate for you. Why was French Quarter Festival started? It cranks up tomorrow. There was a specific reason. It wasn't like, hey, we love music. Hey, let's get a festival going. Generate some money. Hey, let's do a nonprofit. Why was French Quarter Festival started? There was a specific reason. They're like, We're, we got to, why don't we have French Quarter Festival? That'll be a perfect way to blah, 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 blah. You know, we need to blah, 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 blah. French Quarter Festival. A festival would be a great idea for the French Quarter. Why was French Quarter Festival started over 40 years ago? I think this is year 41 or 42. 40, 41 or 42, something like that. The phone lines to participate in the program, Rouse's Markets phone lines, 766-9480. The corporal is at the controls. He demands a salute because he's kind of picky. 766-9480. 766-9480. They had an enlisted man walk by him the other day. He didn't salute. They had gotten an argument at a bar earlier, and the corporal said, hey, you salute the rank, not the person. You don't like me? Too bad. You still salute me. And the uh, private ended up saluting the corporal. I pulled that from Band of Brothers, corporal. They had a scene where one of the under, you know. Yeah, I'm familiar with Band of Brothers. He walked by and didn't salute him. You boys like, hey, you don't salute the person. You salute the rank. So uh, you don't like me. That was the message, the gist yeah. of the message. And that's, that's a real message. That's a real thing. Yeah, for sure. No, I bet you get a little fights and, you know, I don't like that guy, any of that stuff. My brother was in Band of Brothers 9 and 10, the final two. He was the the military doctor who was at the concentration camp. Who was like, don't feed him water, don't feed him. You can't give him water or food right now, that you'll kill him. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. He had a small role in that. He's like a C or D actor, I would say. He is a full-time actor. It's what he does for a living. He does voiceover stuff. I'm watching this really interesting Adolf Hitler Germany thing, World War II. It ends. I'm about to go to sleep. The credits come up, narrated by my brother. I'm like, what? I rewind. I listen. I'm like, oh, it is my brother. Like, listen to 30 minutes of it, oblivious that it was my brother doing the narration. You think I'm kidding. It was just because it was so 
enthralling and interesting and well-written. I didn't even think it was him until I saw the credit and rewound. Wow. But yeah, Nat Geo, History Channel, all kind of stuff. He does the narration. And he's like a C or D actor. He's in a bunch of movies. You can look him up. He's like, uh, hey, you remember the bartender? was like, what are you guys having, bourbon and seven? There's my brother. You know, that kind of stuff. He's those kind of roles. But he's done a bunch of stuff. He was in a couple of good Tom Hanks movies where he got to act with Tom Hanks in scenes, which is pretty cool. Uh, and Spielberg produced. Um, not Band of Brothers. The uh, Saving Private Ryan. He was the radio guy on the beach that Tom Hanks yeah, was talking yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Said something to him. Then he looked away. Said something to him again. Looked away. The third time he looked at him, my brother just had a hole in his face where he got blown up. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, I know that, that was that was him. And let's see what else. Uh, a bunch of stuff. The mummy, the original mummy. When the mummy was attacking, he was shooting all the little mummies with, and then it's click, 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 click. And then, ah, the mummy ate him. So it's stuff like that. Small roles. He had a great uh, um, role with Morgan Freeman. And Morgan Freeman knew he was from Louisiana. Morgan Freeman from Mississippi. I forgot the derogatory term. Morgan Freeman called my brother throughout shooting. Like, jokingly, just like Mississippi superior to Louisiana kind of thing. It was just funny. He, You know, he knew he was a Louisiana boy. So, anyway, my brother said Morgan Freeman was pretty cool. Anyway, there's that. Look, Jason. AKA the corporal that meter that says audience. It just went way down. We drove them away with my brother's an actor talk. <laughs> Wide open Wednesday, a very wet, rainy Wednesday afternoon. Speaking of band of brothers, band after band, after band of rain rolling in and each one dumping a few inches at a time. Some areas six to eight inches in the metro. Sewage and waterboard said seven inches. That's a lot of rain. San Diego gets 10 to 12 annually. This is like more than half a year, six, seven, eight months of San Diego rainfall. We got it in a few hours. We got in 30 or 40 minutes what San Diego gets in 30 or 40 days. Literally. Literally. We got in 30 or 40 minutes what San Diego gets in 30 or 40 days. About two-thirds of their rainfall this morning and this afternoon in New Orleans. But, you know, they pull 10 inches a year, 12 inches a year. Houston to Jacksonville, Florida, essentially the, the I-10 corridor from Houston to Jacksonville, Florida. The, that's the wettest area in the United States, 60 to 65 inches. You can Google any spot. Houston, 62 inches a year. Lake Charles, 60 inches a year. Lafayette, 61. Baton Rouge, you know, 59. New Orleans, 65. Gulfport, 66. Mobile, Alabama, 62. Whatever. I'm just making up the numbers right across the line. Pensacola, right down the, the line. Gainesville, Jacksonville, really into like Kissimmee, Orlando. Same kind of thing, like 55 to 65 inches of rain annually. We're in the wet zone. And still, with all that rain, one of the nicest weather areas, the Gulf Coast, one of the nicest weather areas in the country. I've mentioned this before. Seattle, Portland, Vancouver. Seattle gets 40 inches of rain a year. So we get 50% more rain a year than Seattle. 50% more rain a year than Seattle. Yet we have 60, 60 more days of sunshine than Seattle. We have two more months a year of sunshine, two more months a year of sunshine than Seattle. Yet we have 50% more rain than Seattle. It's because we get like what we got today, six, seven, eight inches in a few hours and Seattle just gets misty overcast for days and days and days and days. Kind of gets depressing, huh? Low sky, cloudy gray, just misty and rainy all the time. They get used to it. It's like us dealing with the heat. It's like Minnesota folks dealing with the cold. 
These Seattle folks know how to deal with the mist and rain and humidity. They're still on their bikes. They're still outside. They're still exercising. They just have the light rain gear and all that kind of stuff. Hey, television audience, we say adios manana, 4 to 5.30. We do two hours on the radio, two big hours on YouTube, the neutral ground with Corey Johnson on YouTube. The first 90 minutes of the two-hour talk radio simulcast on television. That means live on the radio, live on YouTube, and live on TV. 4 to 5.30 statewide. Cox Channel 4, Your View, Louisiana. Cox Channel 4, weekdays 4 to 5.30. Spectrum Channel 333, weekdays 4 to 5.30. Hey, TV audience, you continue. You can continue watching on YouTube right now. Otherwise, mañana, 4 p.m., be there. We seamlessly continue until 6 p.m. on this wide open Wednesday Corey Johnson with you. Thanks so much for joining us. Rouse's Markets is with you with the crawfish. You want to boil them tonight? The rain stopped. The weather's perfect. A little cooler. It is perfect to boil crawfish. Your little backyard space might be a little wet, but that's about all. Your driveway, your carport, it's drying out right now. Perfect night weather-wise. Comfortable. Boil some crawfish. Go get those live by the sack crawfish at your neighborhood rouses. You heading home from work? You'll probably pass two, maybe three rouses on the way home. There are over 60 rouses locations. A third of those 20 plus are in Metro New Orleans. So plenty of rouses in your neighborhood or right next door to your neighborhood. And yeah. Live by the sack crawfish, probably scooped out of a southeast Louisiana pond this morning. That's how Rouse's operates. Local crawfish, they're buying them every day. They're boiling them every day, too. You want them live by the sack? You boil them, they got them. You want them hot from the pot, ready to eat? Rouse's Markets has you covered. That's right. Both kind of crawfish, huh? Live by the sack for you to boil. And hot from the pot, ready to eat for you to enjoy. It's crawfish season. Best quality, best selection, best price. Rouse's Markets knows how to boil crawfish. And they know you know how to. So they got all the supplies for you. The seasonings, lots of choices of seasonings. They've got the burners, the propane. They got everything. The crawfish pot. Everything you need, the big paddle to stir the crawfish. Crawfish season, Rouse's Markets. Doesn't that make sense, though? King cake, you know, Mardi Gras time, no one sells more king cakes in the world than Rouse's Markets. Crawfish season, no one sells more live by the sack Louisiana crawfish than Rouse's Markets in the world. And no one sells more hot from the pot, ready to eat boiled crawfish from South Louisiana than Rouse's in the world. No, it makes sense. It's Southeast Louisiana's grocery store in Southern Mississippi. You diamond head folks, Gulfport, Biloxi, Ocean Springs, half dozen Rouse's in Mobile, Orange Beach, Gulf Shores. Gotta love your neighborhood Rouse's. Corey Johnson with you on a wide open Wednesday. Very rainy. If you missed the four o'clock hour, Steve Nelson, general superintendent with the sewer gen water board joined us. My guesstimation about two thirds of pumps required to operate were operating. They were down to about 33 megawatts of 25 Hertz power. So that's 75% of what they need. They need 44 to run all the pumps. But then you had some pumps go down at pumping stations one, six, and three. So I'm guesstimating 60, 65% pumping capacity citywide today, coupled with a lot of rain, too much rain for the sewage and water board to handle. How we're not digging retention ponds. I mean, It's kind of like a theme of this program. We be digging. We be digging. 
we be digging small holes because all we do in New Orleans is plant trees all day, all the time, every day, 24-7, 365, because we've lost a full third, one third of our tree canopy in just the last 20 years. I had a friend of mine who moved away about 10 years ago, hadn't been back in a few years. He's a native New Orleans and came back and we're not talking about the damn tree canopy. He's like, dude, where are all the trees? So many trees missing in New Orleans, just not as green and lush as it used to be. We're here every day. We're used to, we're numb to the trash and litter and sidewalks broken and, and, and debris and, and, and uncut neutral ground. So yeah, we're going to be very, very numb. Going to be very, very numb to the tree canopy going MIA. A full third gone in 20 years. So, yeah, we be digging. We be digging small holes, planting trees. All New Orleans does is plant trees all the time. That's what we should be doing. And we be digging. We should be digging big holes, retention ponds all the time. Retention pond project after retention pond project after retention pond project. Always digging. Always in New Orleans. The trees, by the way, the green initiative helps drainage, helps curb flooding, alleviate flooding. And then obviously retention ponds are our only way out. Our only way out. We could have double the capacity, a modern system that doubles what the sewage and water board is capable of. We can do two inches the first hour and a full inch of rain every hour. And if we get three, four inches an hour like we did earlier today, that system doubled in capacity, couldn't handle the rain. Retention ponds are our only answer. We be digging. We'd be digging small holes for trees. We'd be digging large holes for retention ponds. We'd be digging 24-7, 365. That should be New Orleans' motto for about the next few decades. Blue plate mayonnaise, where has it been? It's been where it's always been, on your grocery shelf. Should be in your pantry, your refrigerator. Should be on that sandwich you love, in that potato salad, chicken salad. Blue plate mayonnaise, where has it been? Where it's always been. Some of you are confused. I can't find it. It's there. That blue plate mayonnaise label that you're used to, that you've been looking for, it's not there anymore. Brand new label, but the good stuff inside the jar, inside the squeeze bottle, the stuff you've grown to love since 1927, 95 years of New Orleans family tradition, blue plate mayonnaise. Yeah, new look. Same legendary taste, new label, same blue plate mayonnaise. It's on your grocery shelf. Get some today. New Orleans own blue plate mayonnaise. The Lamarck Automotive Collision Center. It's open now. We fix cars and trucks. We do all makes and models. And it doesn't have to be a Ford or a Lincoln. It could be whatever you're driving. 32,000 square feet under roof. Now open at 3101 Williams Boulevard. It's all about you, the customer, getting the most for your dollar. I would say the most perfect collision center anywhere. The Lamarck Automotive Collision Center. 3101 Williams Boulevard. Go check it out. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes on Magazine, as unique as you. For Leidenheimer Baking Company, producing the perfect French bread is more than a vocation. It's a sacred mission. And for five generations, they've used the same time-honored process, baking their signature loaf with its crisp crust and delicate center, unique and still good to the last crumb. From the finest French Quarter restaurants to your local po'boy shop, for over 125 years, New Orleans' own Leidenheimer. Fill the cities, total maintenance keeps your crew. 
From the owners of Katie's in Mid City and Bienvenue in Harahan, an old school deli with over a dozen specialty sandwiches. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview between Canal Boulevard and West End. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria. For game-changing innovation, look to the Latrum family of companies located in Harahan. Intralox, a Latrum company, changed the game when they invented modular plastic conveyor belts over 40 years ago. These belts and innovative Intralox technology are transforming movement in manufacturing facilities around the world. Intralox is a dynamic global company now hiring in production, warehousing, shipping, and more. If you want to be part of our successful team, visit Latrum.com. That's L-A-I-T-R-A-M.com. Scott Craig of Katie's Restaurant. All of my ingredients are fresh. Nothing comes out of a can. Nothing. All of our seafood, as we examine all of our vegetables, all of our vegetables. It's a neighborhood restaurant. Katie's in Mid City. The Woodhouse Day Spa, with five airy locations New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and now Mandeville. A day of relaxation is just moments away at the Woodhouse Day Spa. WoodhouseSpas.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504 556 0809. Dave Miet. Agency.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504 556 0809. Dave Miet. Agency.com. Rouse's New Orleans Grocery Store. Rouse's has the only full service grocery stores both in the French Quarter on Royal Street and in the CBD on Barone in the old Sewell Cadillac building. The Rouse's on the River, Chapatulas at Napoleon, is in a century old warehouse. And uptown on Ferret at the corner of Valence is Rouse's all new boutique store. With seven locations in Orleans Parish, Rouse's is New Orleans Grocery Store. Rouse's Markets taste like home. The Port of New Orleans is the gateway to global commerce, the economic engine that moves Louisiana and our country forward. For more than 125 years, Port Nola has continued to deliver the goods we use each and every day by river, rail, and by road. No matter what, it all happens right here, delivering Louisiana's future at the Port of New Orleans, your working river. Learn more about your Port of New Orleans. Visit portnola.com. Trey Yen in Mandeville, a New Orleans tradition for over 40 years, serving the finest Louisiana-inspired Chinese cuisine. Open Tuesday through Sunday. Trey Yen. Here at the NOLA Coalition, we love our kids and we love our city. The people of New Orleans are standing together for a better future. By harnessing our collective resources, the NOLA Coalition will create a safer, more prosperous city for all residents. Your support is needed to help reduce violence, invest in our children, and drive generational change. Join now at nolacoalition.info. My situ, that's Arabic for grandmother, used to make the best football kibbe. You can experience kibbe just like my grandmother used to make and so many other Middle Eastern favorites on the streetcar line, Lebanon's Cafe. Boy, after this rainy Wednesday, you're beelining back home across the causeway to the North Shore. You deserve a break. Call Trey Yen right now and fire in a big to-go order. Walk into the house a hero. Mom, dad, the kids, everybody loves Trey Yen. 626-4476. That's the number at Trey Yen. 626-4476. Curbside delivery. You don't even leave your car. Fire in a big to-go order. Trey Yen in Mandeville. Or better yet, bring the family over there and decompress. At the foot of the causeway, you North Shore folks. Hey, South Shore folks, 25 short minutes from Lakeside Mall. You get off I-10 at Causeway. In 25 short minutes, you're in the parking lot at Trey Yen in Mandeville. Because there's no driving on the North Shore. Right when you cross the causeway immediately on your left, 
Chinese cuisine heaven. Trey Yen in Mandeville. So damn good. So good. Wide open Wednesday edition of the program. A very rainy and wet Wednesday. Steve Nelson, general superintendent with the Sewage and Water Board, joined us last hour. In a nutshell, New Orleans East, those pumps run on regular power, 60 hertz. West Bank, those pumps in Orleans Parish run on 60 hertz, regular power. Most of, you know, the original part of the city, uptown, mid-city, Gentilly, City Park area, Carrollton, Broadmoor. French Quarter, Treme, Bywater, all of that runs on old power 25 hertz pumps. The Sewage and Water Board needs to create that power. To run all the 25 hertz pumps, they need 44 megawatts of 25 hertz power. 44 megawatts. They started the day with 40.5 megawatts, so less than ideal. Then three of the EMDs, those are essentially diesel locomotive engines. They produce about two and a half megawatts of power each. All three of those went out. That's seven and a half megawatts of power loss. So the 40 and a half all of a sudden is down to 33 megawatts or about 75% of the 44, what they need. Then you had some 25 hertz pumps, not the power being the problem, the pump being the problem. Some pumps went out at pumping station one and six, which service Broadmoor, Uptown and Carrollton, and also pumping station three, which services Gentilly and parts of city park neighborhoods. Not all the pumps, those pumping stations weren't totally out, but some of the pumps. So you're, you're reducing pumping capacity even more. So power may have been at 33 megawatts of a desired 44 megawatts or 75%. But with some additional pumps out, I'm guessing the city was at about 60, maybe 65%, two-thirds pumping capacity. During this morning and this afternoon's rain event. Now, here's the deal. If if the sewage and water board's at 100%, if you doubled capacity, right now it's 100% would be an inch an hour pumped, a half hour pumped every hour after that. Or... Three inches of rain in an hour would take five hours to pump out. If you doubled that capacity and you had a deluge like today, parts of the city are still going to be overwhelmed in flood. Our only solution, retention ponds. And it's amazing we haven't been digging them post-Katrina now. Going on 20 years. It's what we should be doing. Even with the most efficient, effective sewage and water board, even one in fantasy land, better than than what it does. Certain rain events will still overwhelm it. Retention ponds are the answer. Wide open Wednesday edition of the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Corey Johnson with you. Where New Orleans talks. I do have a $50 Woodhouse Day Spa gift certificate available. Next month, about four weeks away, guys. Mother's Day. Got to take care of For game-changing innovation, look to... You know what mom wants? Mom wants a day of relaxation from the Woodhouse Day Spa. That's what mom wants. A day of relaxation from the city's premier day spa, the Woodhouse. Five area locations, two on the South Shore, two on the North Shore, one by the Mall of Louisiana in Baton Rouge. French Quarter Festival starts tomorrow with some fantastic weather tomorrow. Even better Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Unreal. Why was French Quarter Festival started? There's a specific reason why French Quarter Festival was started. Give me the answer to that. I got 50 big bucks for you. Good at one of the five area Woodhouse Day Spa locations. Just in time, guys. May 12th, next month, Mother's Day. Rouse's Markets phone lines, 766-9480.
Rouse's Markets phone lines, 766-9480. Thanks so much for joining us on this wide open Wednesday edition of the program. Yeah, wet today. It came down. Lots of rain. Sewage and water board plant Claiborne, seven inches. Some parts of the metro claiming eight or eight plus inches of rain, all in like five, six hours, seven hours, morning through lunchtime into early afternoon. Lots of street flooding and not just on, in Orleans. I mean, this proves my point about the sewage and water board and pumping our way out. There's no way to that is the ultimate solution. That's only a, a help. Street flooding in Jefferson, street flooding on the West Bank, street flooding on the North Shore. No, because it's so much water, it's overwhelming. Rouse's Markets phone lines, 766-9480, 504-766-9480. Hey, New Orleans, Seven Helm Paint and Decorating Locations, Benjamin Moore Paint, Painting Expert, steering you in the right direction for over 55 years, free two-hour delivery. Hey, Baton Rouge, Tiger Town, you too can now experience Helm Paint and Decorating. For over 55 years in New Orleans, and now in Baton Rouge, four Metro Baton Rouge locations, plus free two-hour delivery anywhere in Metro Baton Rouge. That includes West Baton Rouge, like Port Allen and Brule, or East Baton Rouge, all the way to Gonzales. Helm paint and decorating. When you got a paint in Metro New Orleans, when you got a paint in Metro Baton Rouge, do it once, do it right. They'll steer you in the right direction. Helm paint and decorating. Scott Craig of Katie's Restaurant. All of my ingredients are fresh. Nothing comes out of a can. Nothing. All of our seafood is in Louisiana. All of our vegetables are Louisiana vegetables. It's a neighborhood restaurant. Katie's in Mid City. For game-changing innovation, look to the Latrim family of companies located in Harahan. Intralox, a Latrim company, changed the game when they invented modular plastic conveyor belts over 40 years ago. These belts and innovative Intralox technology are transforming movement in manufacturing facilities around the world. Intralox is a dynamic global company now hiring in production, warehousing, shipping, and more. If you want to be part of our successful team, visit Latrim.com. That's L-A-I-T-R-A-M.com. Young's Dry Cleaning has free pickup and delivery. That's right. Young's Dry Cleaning has absolutely free pickup and delivery. Home or office, East Bank or West Bank. Call Young's at 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. That's what I said. That's French for bread. Since 1896, a true taste of New Orleans, Leidenheimer French bread. It's time to relax. The Woodhouse Day Spa, Metro New Orleans' premier day spa experience, now with five area locations. For a day of relaxation or maybe just a quick one-hour getaway, the Metro area's premier day spa experience is at the Woodhouse Day Spa. And now five area locations, New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and our newest location in Mandeville, the Woodhouse Day Spa. Woodhousebars.com. 1970 was an exciting time in New Orleans. The first Jazz Fest was held, the city hosted its first Super Bowl, and the first Helm Paint location opened on Earhart Boulevard. While the floppy disks, mood rings, and pet rocks may have come and gone since the 70s, Helm Paint has grown to become your premier source for quality Benjamin Moore products, competitive pricing, and personal service. Please visit one of our locations today and we'll meet our competitors' prices on any identical product. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore let us steer you in the right direction. Helm Paint. And the Port of New Orleans is the gateway to global commerce, the economic engine that moves Louisiana and our country forward. For more than 125 years, Port Nola has continued to deliver the goods we use each and every day by river, rail, and by road. No matter what, it all happens right here. 
delivering Louisiana's future at the Port of New Orleans, your working river. Learn more about your Port of New Orleans. Visit portnola.com. Trey Yen in Mandeville, a New Orleans tradition for over 40 years, serving the finest Louisiana-inspired Chinese cuisine. Open Tuesday through Sunday. Trey Yen. Rouse's, New Orleans Grocery Store. Rouse's has the only full-service grocery stores both in the French Quarter on Royal Street and in the CBD on Barone in the old Sewell Cadillac building. The Rouse's on the River, Chapatulas at Napoleon, is in a century-old warehouse. And uptown on Ferret at the corner of Valence is Rouse's all-new boutique store. With seven locations in Orleans Parish, Rouse's is New Orleans Grocery Store. Rouse's Markets. Taste like home. Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504 556 0809. Dave Miet. INSAgency.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504 556 0809. Dave Miet. INSAgency.com. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine as unique as you. Ladies and gentlemen, in this Lamarck Automotive Complex is something called quick lane. Tires, wheel alignment, you know, struts, servicing your transmission. We're doing all makes and models. It doesn't have to have been purchased from us. It's for you. It handles your lifestyle with your budget in mind. And we want to get you in and out as quick as possible. Quick lane, you got to come see it. You're going to love the experience right there at Williams Boulevard in Kenner. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria has over 15 specialty sandwiches, a big 10-ounce burger, and some of the best pizza in New Orleans. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview between Canal Boulevard and West End. Young's Dry Cleaning has free pickup and delivery. That's right. Young's Dry Cleaning has absolutely free pickup and delivery. Home or office, East Bank or West Bank. Call Young's at 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. That's what I said. That's French for bread. Leidenheimer. Since 1896, a true taste of New Orleans, Leidenheimer French bread. Hardcore Corey, three strikes and you are out of there. I'm pretty lenient. I'll give you a, a, a mistake or two, but. Three strikes and you're done. I, I, I've been going to a restaurant. They've been delivering. The delivery guy's been bringing to me four different houses I've lived in in New Orleans. Two of the four outside of the delivery area, and he still delivers to me. I'm not kidding you. For like 25, 30 years since like the late 1990s, they've been delivering to me. And it's new ownership and... The food's just not nearly as good. It's getting ridiculously inconsistent. And last night was the final straw. They delivered. It was bad again. It was like the second time in the last three or four times that it was bad, where it's like, I'm throwing it in the garbage bad. Greasy and nasty, not edible, not worth it. Don't charge my card bad. Now I called him back. I told the girl who I've known about a decade, who's very sweet. Love you. Good, good knowing you. Adios. Tell delivery guy, my buddy for 25 years. Adios. I'm done. Y'all just, and they just like, sorry. No, they, they, we know you're not the only one complaining. I mean, just terrible. Get new owners and they just want to, they're going for the dollar and you know, it's mind blowing. There's a, a, a local place I'd go to, another place I'd get a to-go order. I'm not kidding you. They, they got bought by a national chain, 
and they stopped serving Leinheimer French bread there. And, and that was like the, the, the my to go order was expensive. It was chicken, uh, mashed potatoes and salad. And I looked at the Leinheimer French bread. It's like kind of the fourth course almost. And now these the three courses without the line armor, it's not worth the money. I'm like, first off, you got rid of a New Orleans staple because you're now bought by a national chain and you're bringing in the crappy bread from wherever they bring it in. And it's just not worth it. It was expensive to begin with. Hardcore Corey, three strikes and you're out. 25 years. No, I wish the restaurant was still good. I liked the convenience of the delivery. I liked all the people that took care of me. I took care of them with tips. But I finally had to say bye-bye after just crappy inconsistency and a downward spiral. Fix the problem, right, blue boy? See you tomorrow, straight up 4 o'clock. Be there on a Thursday. Stay dry. You're on the neutral ground with Corey Johnson on TV on Cox Channel 4 and Spectrum Channel 333. Also on YouTube, on radio at NOLA Talk, 93.9 FM, WSLA New Orleans. It's 6 p.m.